Hello, thank you for joining me. In this video, we're going to draw loads of people. And we're not just going to draw people, we're going to draw people and explore different styles so that you can start to consider what is your style of person? How can you most comfortably start adding people into your scenes or just filling pages with people in a style that suits your art? I have a preferred style. I draw people like this. Really quirky little discontinuous lines and sort of loose and <laughs> abstract in many ways, but it's a style which suits me and it's a style which means I can pop those kind of people into my scenes and feel great, feel free about doing it. That doesn't mean that you have to like that style. It doesn't mean that it has to work for you. The principles behind all these styles are the same and I'll talk you through exactly how to feel good about drawing people using simple principles. So instead of today just showing you my style over and over again and saying, oh look, it's really easy. I'm going to show you my style and then we're going to work through loads of other styles using Posca pens, using few day pens, using really basic ballpoint pens and pencil. I won't be good at everything, I won't be comfortable at everything, but I'll show you how you can explore, feel uncomfortable and eventually find exactly how you want to approach people in the future. By the end I'm sure you'll have a page packed with awesome mistakes and awesome triumphs and amazing people and just fun. And more than anything, I hope that you just take this chance to experiment, explore, take some risks and develop your skills a little bit. If you do want to learn more about sketching and doodling people, then I have a couple of Skillshare classes you might be interested in. There's a month free if you use my affiliate link down below. And um, have a go if you like, and you can join me there. But also let's just see what happens in the rest of today's video. Today we're going to explore the simple art of drawing people, the kind of people you can easily add to your sketches or just use as really fun little works of art in and of themselves, filling up pages of doodles like this. But we're going to move beyond just doing it towards doing it and finding your style because there's no good doing a really neat, say, Posca pen sketch and adding these people in. There's no point in doing a lovely soft watercolour landscape and then adding these people in. They're obviously going to clash stylistically. So today will be a really fun exploration of a few different materials, a few different styles and showing how we can take simple ideas and expand on them. So first I'm just going to demonstrate and talk you through my normal people. We've got a little area up here which is going to be our little sort of warm-up area. And here I'm just going to sort of show how each pen or bit of equipment I'm using works and show the kind of marks we're thinking of as we move through lots of different styles of people. So first we have my fountain pen. This happens to be my Twisby fountain pen. It's got an extra fine nib. And the advantage of this is we go really, really fine. We turn it over, we get really scratchy lines, but also we can create these kind of neat, bold shapes, these very much more sort of illustrative lines. This, you know, in short, a fountain pen is a wonderfully versatile tool. It doesn't do everything, but it does an awful lot. What it isn't great at is absolute control. <laughs> so it's more fun for that expressive style. And that's what you kind of see in these. So my preferred type of people, if we just start with the very basics, are to think about shapes. So we do a sort of circle or a square, triangle and a circle. And suddenly we have people. I'm not doing this rigidly. So rigid would be like so. This would be rigid shapes. You can see the shapes matching up. But instead of that, I'm doing fluid little lines. And just by doing these fluid lines, we can kind of think as we go and adapt whatever happens to happen on our page. And by doing so, we find ourselves able to really quickly find little shapes, little doodles, move the body around, move the arms around, and we're just really quickly capturing people. It's really, it is this simple. It's easy after a while, after practicing, you'll find yourself working. You can never expect to, although something can be easy, you can never expect to sort of master it immediately. But I assure you, with a little bit of practice, and after this video, and when you sort of start to identify the kind of style you want to explore and you just get confident and practicing it, you will be able to just really quickly capture people, give them character, give them, you know, 
lovely dress here or a nice sort of suit. And all of this is in very much my style. I might even go a lot looser. So if I'm doing a really loose sketch, like many of my um, urban sketches are, for example, my people will degrade into really simple and loose shapes to match whatever the style of the rest of the piece is. And these guys, for me, they still work. They're still people. They're obviously not beautiful portraits, which are exactly photorealistic, but they're still people. So we'll call this style one. We'll call this Toby style. And that's not to be arrogant. It's just how I do them. And I, I think that's a fair enough way to label them at the moment. Now let's just change pen though to, to try some different ideas. Now the clever amongst you will see that I forgot to show this pen, but I'm going to do it and edit it together as if I did this <laughs> correctly. What I'm using for these carrot people, these silhouette people, will be my few day pen with a flexible nib. So I'll pop few day and flex here. And what we've got here is the ability to do fine lines, bold lines, really bold lines, and also to almost sort of block in and black in. And that is where we can suddenly create really vivid, quick people from. So here, instead of drawing out the shapes, we are going to be sort of blocking in these kind of silhouettes. And you can imagine very easily just coming in and doing these simple kind of carrot figures with watercolour as well, where you let the watercolour sort of flow down the page. And we're doing the same thing. We're doing simple shapes, but silhouetted out. And we can also start capturing even the idea of having maybe an umbrella so we can have these simple silhouettes these things which you know we all understand in silhouette can suddenly emerge on the page through these very simple very very simple marks you know poses can happen as well we can have a sort of blocky person with their legs akimbo sort of standing in a sort of that power pose the classic uh, pose of a politician and we can also just do them quicker and really simple bold crowds of people get them all crowded together you know this is how we can suddenly find lots of people within a scene so these are people they are quick easy effective within the right kind of context and it doesn't just have to be done with this kind of pen if we come back for example to my fountain pen we could also do a kind of simple bit of hatching to do the same thing but a little neater a little bit more controlled perhaps more room for details here we could add a, a bag to our little doodled person so this one this simple idea you could call them silhouette people i'm going to call them carrot people just because that's the idea they come from carrot people uh, as a really simple way of using a more blocky style to come in now these people so far have been very fluid and quick. They've been very sort of flowy and floaty. Um, but we can also create really illustrative, almost cartoony people. And for that, I'm going to use a Posca pen or a paint marker. This produces a relatively stable line. So I do as fine as I can, I can do that. If I do as thick as I can, it gets a bit thicker. But really it's a very controlled, bold and bright line. So great for these more fixed shapes. They don't have to be super fixed, but it's lovely to cre create these kind of much more controlled people, which we can just sort of bring out in really simple shapes. So if your style of art is much more um, linear, much more geometric, then trying people like this in any pen, but I'm just using Posca pen as a, a different change, could be a great way to do it. And here we're just doing sort of well-rounded, you know, neat people. We're not flowing and floating, we're not scribbling and dotting, we're just keeping the people going in a nice fashion. You know, we are breaking them down really easily. We've got a square, we'll block in that square if we want with a bit of hatching. The next thing beyond the square is it adds in a triangle. I'll just keep that bit blocked in. And then the next bit comes is a triangle and a rectangle. And then if we want to advance that as well, we can start adding in these other very simple shapes. So here we've got this kind of lovely, very simple geometric feel. 
And the nice thing about this is we can very easily apply it to a female figure as well. So instead of having this square running all the way through, what we'll do, if I just pop in, let's do it like this, pop in a head and I'll pop in the legs, but we come back in with some red just for to show the change. We just prop in a sort of dress-like shape and it really is suddenly that symbol to create a female figure. That's a bit exaggerated, but let's say we wanted to just do it more subtle. You just do something like so. And now we've moved from sort of man to woman using these really simple controlled people. Fun to, if we're doing them illustrative, to add little punches of colour. So let's, wherever we see some skin, we can give them a little punch of colour. Maybe in the lady, we can move to using purple. A bit of purple over here as well. So we've got sort of skin being a different colour. And we can even add in little touches, you know, to decorate. These are simple, illustrative, fun people. And they work really well, again, in pages like this. I've done a whole video rendering people in a very similar style to this. And just because they're simple doesn't mean they aren't versatile as well. If we start curving those shapes, we get quite a surprising amount of character in. So we can sort of suggest here either a bit of movement. He could be going this way. So if we sort of hatch in this side, give him some little movement lines. Now our man is moving that way. Or if we exaggerate that curve, and we're still just really sticking with these same ideas. If we exaggerate that curve and we hatch in up the back here, perhaps now our little man is kind of leaning over. And we want to expand our hands. We just pop them out. And we can do the same little mix of little colours. Get that red here, get the red there, here. And look, we've got very simple ways to expand on our style of people. Now again, there's no reason we can't do exactly these things in our other pens. So I'm going to just show you very quickly. There's no reason that these kind of people can't adapt and change, you know, become taller, become shorter become you know whatever you like using different pens you see even just picking up this pen i immediately sort of go to doing a bit more wobbly lines so it is much easier i think it's partly my muscle memory but it is easier to be controlled with the right pen for the right style but there's no reason you can't use any pen for any style and there's also no reason why you have to choose exactly these shapes to experiment and see what kind of shapes work for whatever style that you prefer and I'm sure you'll find something if this is your kind of style um, you'll find something that works so here we go we'll call these geometric people so geometric people and just so we get that hint of color coming through I'll come back and underline that in a couple of my pocket pens that we've used the red and the blue why not now I have a couple of tools here that I very rarely use on the channel, but are great. You know, they're things which are lying around everywhere. This is um, what we call a biro in the UK or a ballpoint. Um, I think biro, it's a bit like calling a Hoover a Hoover. It's really a brand name. And they're classic office pens, aren't they? They're great though for getting a quite a remarkable variety of line from really soft to quite bold. They don't really become super thick and thin, but they're almost like a pencil in that you can hatch and draw and kind of shade with them. And this leads us to perhaps a more scribbly style. All of these have got a little bit of economy of line, haven't they? But with a pencil or a biro, and we'll start with a biro, you can imagine just doing more kind of sort of not uh, frenzied, but quick and loose and sketchy people. Maybe this person's got you know, bit of hatching on, but this is instead of hatching, we can actually start to shade. So we've got a, a shape-based person, but a little bit more perhaps drama going on. Still sticking to the same ideas, but now instead of doing it all as one continuous line, we're able to do these little quick lines, quick lines here and there. Get a little bit more extra detail, a bit more extra tone in. We can come back and add things after the fact instead of having to do it all at the beginning. And again, it's all the same ideas, same ideas, same stuff, but just working out what would fit your style. And it's really good fun as well just to create these pages and 
test your artistic nerves, see how much variety you can really sort of generate for yourself. So what else can we think of? Let's try another little umbrella. We've got one already on the page, haven't we? And here we can ignore the head and just get these kind of feet in. Is this going to be something good for getting a bit of movement in as well? I imagine it is. So if we kind of get someone in motion with these lighter lines, the feet can be in all sorts of weird positions, but it just feels more fluid. We can get a couple of children perhaps running around. Perhaps one of them's got a little football here. And these are now just real quick scribbly shapes. So we could call this, I suppose, scribble style, couldn't we? <laughs> but it's a bit more tonal. It's a bit more like a, a value study. If we were outside doing a landscape, we'd do bigger, bolder areas. If we go to a pencil now, you can see the same idea. We're going to get even less boldness. The boldest I can get with this is that, down to a really fine line. Good for shapes, but really, really the power here is in the, the shading. So here we can, again, do really simple people but we'll be able to get a lot of suggestion of what's going on through just basically shading basically just shading in and seeing how it develops as we shade again let's do some movement let's get someone with their arms up, up. and we can again flow around see what happens get that leg out and maybe now they're kind of dancing or ice skating even and all of this just through simple lines. Now what we're missing here is that real sort of punch, that real blackness. All of these have got real punch, whereas the buyer and the pencil are lighter, more subtle, definitely more of a kind of tonal work than an illustrative sketching kind of style. But we'll call them, let's call them scribbled people. Again, a really lovely way to draw. It's much more forgiving. You make a mistake here. Well, you know, oh no, that went wrong, but you just cover it up because you can hatch and draw over it and you can just find your people back again, find them back again. Now I'm going to move back to my favourite implement, which you probably know is this. And there's a couple more ideas that we can look at doing. So all of these are kind of forming people in a very simple way, it's very simple shapes. Every, everything here is basically simple shapes. But there's an idea of drawing people where you turn them into mannequins. And we can do that in really simple ways. So the mannequin is just, again, a set of shapes, but it allows us to develop the ideas of movement a little more. So here we have a head, a circle. Then we have the thorax, which is kind of like a, a circle, not a circle, like a triangle, inverted a little bit. We join that up to a pelvis. And now we've got a sort of articulated human body. Um, a bit like, to be honest, a bit like a stick figure, but it's just the next level of stick figure. We are just taking our stick figure and we're adding the kind of rib cage and the pelvis. And from here, we can examine the sort of human form a lot more. We can work out much more fluid kind of poses. So great for identifying movement, great for sort of really quick studies, perhaps, of... Um, when, if we're doing life drawing, it's this kind of idea of mannequin drawing or constructional drawing as well. So drawing from the imagination, which isn't always one of my strong points. And for me, I find having a little way of dealing with it. So a person <laughs> falling over, you know, they're not very alive, are they? <laughs> but never mind, these things happen. Let's try a different pose and see if we can make it more, more lifelike. I did say, as I said that, that my uh, ability to draw from the imagination is sometimes hampered. I find it easier in my styles, in the ways I'm comfortable with. And this is the, what I was saying up here, you'll find it very easy eventually in your style to draw these things really quickly. When I'm trying to display other styles, which I'm not basically as fluent in, well, yes, look, <laughs> things go horribly wrong. This is supposed to be a person asleep, but they ended up uh, definitely asleep, let's say. Um, anyway, let's try someone upside down instead i want to do something a bit fun so we've got person up the down about to fall over let's try someone running so we're going to try and just get the pelvis and the, the chest in line and these articulating joints sort of tilting in the right way and we've got the arm coming out the back so 
eventually I've got something akin to, <laughs> akin to these people, hopefully. Maybe let's do one more very silly pose. Let's try them sort of cross-legged. There we go. I say silly, that's a quite a nice pose. We'll have them in a sort of meditation pose. What I find helpful sometimes in these kind of things where I'm not certain is I can always come back. So yeah, things have gone a bit wrong in places. The proportions aren't brilliant, uh, but I can come back and I can do little corrections. This might be where using a pencil or using the biro is great because you can make those mistakes more easily and come back and correct them more easily. But here, we'll call these mannequin people. Well worth trying very good in many people's styles obviously for me a little more challenging a little less easy now last but not least what i want to do is display it so we've just really simple people which we're not splitting into shapes but we're kind of treating as a whole i don't know how else to describe this but it's that idea of basically going you know what a person can almost just be a star shape it works as a star and you could do these in any pen, any style, and we're just treating them as like this kind of silhouette, but not, not in the same way here, not in the same way that we're dragging their shape down. Here we're kind of just finding as a whole outline, we're finding the person, and a little bit of judicious hatching might be helpful. We might find just that we want to add in little bits of extra, like leg or limb pointing out one way and do you see how these are these are very different from here there's similar ideas but very different at the same time and we can get more sort of flowing shapes coming from this maybe someone coming towards us in a big gown or coat and we just hatch in the middle and that shows where their body is someone sort of hunched over here maybe even you see their arm sort of falling down to the side and again, just sensible, judicious, little bits of hatching, really simple people, simple ideas, um, and just allow the thing to sort of just emerge from the silhouette, the very fundamentals of the person. Now, I want to just do one more, and I'm conscious I'm running out of space, and this is not one, this is one I've seen, <laughs> not actually done before. What we'll do, we'll pop this here, call this uh, silhouette people, and that's, you can now see why I wanted to call these carrot people, because I had some more silhouettes coming down below. But I just want to show the idea that people can also be very abstract. And there's styles I've seen out there where you're literally just building people kind of out of lots of different shapes and squares. And suddenly, like, by just building up all these different parts of them, you can actually find a person and this is just by literally, you know, you could do it with squares here, just finding how to like make this person fit. And you could imagine this style might be someone who's really geometric in how they paint or draw, but equally you could do it with circles. So this person could be built up through lots of circles. It's just finding those strokes which fit how you approach your drawing. And there we go, we've got a very abstract set of people. And I'll just pop abstract. I just wanted to show again, you know, I'm not saying these are good. They're not something I'm com comfortable with. They're not something I've ever tried before until literally just now. But I've seen them and I admire the people who can do them. And I don't want people to look and go, well, Toby says he's confident with these and he's confident with these and therefore they're the best ones. Absolutely not. Um, I'm confident with these, so they're the best for me because they fit my style. These are also really fun to try and they're great to stretch my creativity. But somewhere in here or somewhere outside of all of these examples will be something that you can do brilliantly, which will fit your paintings and your style. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe. It means a huge amount. You might enjoy these videos. I will see you in the next one.